This is Twit. So this is the Huawei Mate Pro, MatePad Pro, 12.6 inch. This is a 12.6 inch Android tablet. That's what I'm going to say. It's an Android tablet. And ah, that wasn't supposed to fall like that. But And it's broken. No, it's not. No, no, no. It's not <laughs> broken. It's uh, So up here is where I put it on the wrong spot. That's why it was a little loose. Got so it. what I'm showing you right here is this pencil that comes with the Huawei MatePad Pro. And it docks and charges wirelessly just like that. Oh, nice. Why hasn't Apple done this? That's convenient. Yeah, that's super convenient. Uh, so that's really nice. And then what's also really nice is I'm going about it through the hardware first. And I'll explain. You'll understand why in a second. Cool. Yeah, this hardware, this folio is just really nice. Look at this. Look at this quick. As all the magnets are falling apart. Look at this quick startup already. Just right there. We've got our notifications. We've got this really nice um, keyboard that I can't even explain. I managed. I did a couple typing tests with it. I was within... 90 to 100 words per minute every time I did the typing test, which nice. just sort of, yeah, it's, it makes me happy because it's not very easy to achieve with a lot yeah. of keyboards out there. Especially on the folio type kind of fold around keyboards. Correct. You know, usually they're so flat and so, yeah, just shallow on the travel and stuff. They're hard to type on because of it. I, I find anyways. No, I agree with you. You know, this might be an interesting little news tidbit. Um, let's see. On I can't show you. It won't work through the web camera. But it says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, to mask or not to mask, what will Boris Johnson and others do after the 19th of July, Mateo? Who knows? Who knows? I wish I knew. Um, I, if, if we had that sort of insider information, we could make some really interesting decisions about travel for example i know i know Tech um travel. and and here's the thing mateo i'm sharing with you the news from this huawei mate pad pro because it's not actually set on the u.s region because as you see ladies and gentlemen huawei has been politically and banned out of the United States. Yep. So you cannot access anything on this tablet as a U.S. dwelling person. You can only access it as an overseas dwelling person. I actually didn't check to see if Canada was on here, but I ended up just defaulting to the U.K. because I figured English, mm -hmm. I can understand what's going on over there. Originally, I had it set in Romanian, but didn't really like the apps that it was serving me through the uh, Harmony, or excuse me, the app gallery. Uh, Harmony OS 2.0, that's what's running on this Huawei MatePad. Um, but before, again, we talk about that OS, let me throw some specs at you. This is a 6.7 millimeter thick tablet, which is like not that bad, actually. It's yeah. really nice. About 1.3 pounds. It's super light. Actually has kind of a plasticky back, but you couldn't even tell in person. I honestly didn't even realize until I had looked up the specs. Uh, we've got that 12.6 inch ultra wide display with a ratio of 1610. 90% bezel, which Huawei is very proud of. And we'll note that it's 5% smaller than the one on the iPad Pro. So there you go. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 capable, so ready for all the next generation connections. T 256 gigs of space on this tablet that I have in my hand, which is really nice. A 5 nanometer Huawei Kirin 9000E processor that I could not benchmark. Partly because of the app bundle situation, um, I couldn't figure it out in time that I wrote the review for Gizmodo. Um, so I kind of just went by other people's benchmarks and it appears to be a very capable processor, um, akin to a lot of seventh and eighth generation Intel ones, just in case anybody's curious. Uh, also 10,050 milliamp battery on the inside of this, which is honestly 10 and a half, uh, hours I got of battery life. 
Hmm. streaming through a 24 hour YouTube video on this tablet, uh, which is how we do our battery test at Gizmodo and uh, 40 watt wired fast charging, 27 watt wireless charging. It also has reverse 10 watt wireless charging capabilities, which is super neat because if you're out and about, it means you can charge up your smartphone or your smartwatch by just placing it on the back. Um, and then, of course, I showed you that pen, which is really super nice. It's not quite like an S pen, but I actually like it for that reason. It feels like a, like a really sturdy Bic pen. So all the accessories, all the hardware, Huawei's got going for it. But because I'm in the U.S., I'm already locked out of so much. Um, and it doesn't have Google Play Store or Google Play Services. And I really found out how much I rely on my Google account to get me into things. Because I could barely access anything I needed, even through the browser. If you try and access your Google Play account or even your Gmail, it will immediately lock you out. It will say, sorry, this is not supported through this browser. I've tried that in several different browsers and I got the same message. Very frustrating. Um, I just want to quickly... Let's just quickly, very quickly go through this list of apps that I tried to find in the Huawei app gallery, which is where you can get apps for Huawei OS 2.0. All Trails, no. Blue by ADT, no. Samsung Smart Things, only externally, and it'll give you an APK site to go download it from if it finds it somewhere hosted externally. TP Link Casa, no. Philips Hue, only third party apps. Digitally imported, no. Spotify, no. And again, I tried to offload that through an app package. Didn't work. Hmm. ExpressVPN, that was the only one I was able to find. That installed just fine. HBO Max, no. Paramount Plus, no. Instagram, no. There was Snapchat and TikTok, though. Patreon, no. And lastly, Pokemon Go. Hmm. That was not available in the Huawei app gallery. So, um... Hmm. This is not offered in the United States. So really me going through this was just an experiment of using Harmony OS. And I will say that otherwise, besides the app situation, it's a very pleasant experience. Browse is really nice. The UI is really nice. I don't really care too much for like the iconography and just like the basic aesthetic. But otherwise, it's all Android bones. It's... You know how when you get into a Lexus and it just feels like a Toyota body? It's kind of what it feels like with this version of Android. You know it's Android. It's just not Google's Android. And mm. that becomes even more apparent when you try to do anything on Google.com. Yeah. yeah, well, you're you're <laughs> also writing about and, and talking about, you know, this like OAuth problem, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that right there is just a pain in the butt. Like, sure, there are ways around that potentially, but what a, yeah. I mean, it's it's not ex it's not even just that you explicitly can't use the Play Store to install apps or have an Android uh, Google app running. It's that any other apps that you happen to have or services that you happen to have that require a Google sign-in it's going to give you a lot of trouble getting into those those apps and services. And uh, that's probably going to be one of those things that you don't realize how much of an impact it has until suddenly you don't have it anymore. Yeah, it's making me think a lot about this whole like ecosystem I'm a part of, a uh, ecosystem that once felt like super open mm. and just open to whatever. And the more we've been talking about it, it just feels... Not necessarily like it's closing up, but it's clicky, right? Yeah. Because if you, you go find yourself in one click and you're kind of stuck in that little click, and that's how I feel like using Google and its OAuth to log into, I mean, I use it to log in at Dropbox. I use it to log in here and there. Um, luckily, I had a previous method of logging into Dropbox that let me in. So I was able to get in that way, but mm -hmm. otherwise couldn't do any work. Couldn't publish material podcast. Um, that's my show on Real AFM with mm -hmm. Andy and Co. And I'm the one who's in charge of publishing that podcast. And I couldn't do any like downloading or I couldn't do, upload anything to Libsyn. I couldn't get into the CMS. And that was all because of my OAuth. Mm. So 
Yeah. yeah. So it was a, like, well, forget this. Right I guess I'm not doing any work on this because I can't. Yeah. I'm just going to do it on my desktop. Ouch. And that's for a Food. device that starts at, uh, you know, around $800, you point out in your article, uh, U.S. forty nine. It's $800 hardware for sure. It is not the software experience, though. For a U.S. person, like, Mateo, you were saying earlier that people in other countries use other app stores. And I totally, you know, I have family members who do. Like, I'm, I'm familiar a little bit with that. So I wish I wish I could have been overseas so I could get the full experience of having this because it definitely feels it definitely feels half doing it from the US. I just I feel all those fences put up. Yeah. Physically. Uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry Huawei them. forced you to read the BBC. Oh yeah, yeah, that's no actually Mateo even worse. Everything is sky news on here. It's like, oh dear. It's, it's news like plane crash, train crash, plane crash, train crash. I'm like, oh my God, everything is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not funny. Everything being terrible is not funny. Although it's kind No, of it's funny. not, but that's yeah. Sky News for you. They tell you yeah. about like every terrible every that's their thing. version of salaciousness. It's just like yeah. here's a really terrible thing that happened to a person today and the aftermath of it to traumatize you. And here's some ads on releasing equity from your household because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the last thing I just want to leave everybody with, because this was the biggest issue that I ran into, but it was the side loading of apps. I was able to get some apps on here. Sure. Not a problem. Download them from APK Mirror, download them from some other APK sources, as shown to me through Pedal Search. Thanks, Pedal. Um, but when it came to apps like Spotify, couldn't install it because of the app package situation. I tried to install it through the APK Mirror app, which is a side loadable app because you could just download it from their site. And it kept crashing. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with the chipset, the difference in specifications. When we talked about those app bundles, we talked about how their specific device Mm, right. Whatever packets packets in there that make the app work specifically with the device or with a chipset or something. Yeah. So I'm imagining it has something to do with that and then it just crashed. That's just my complete unscientific inference. Um, but it was a very interesting it's it's been an interesting experience. Hmm. And I I'm just <sighs> Is this the future of Android? I feel like this is what's happening. Yeah, right. Things are splintering a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't They're know. They're getting it's... very good in the Google lane. So if you're staying in the Google lane, you're going to be fine. But if you want to venture out of that lane, if you want to try something else, something like Harmony OS makes me feel like it's not without its like bundle of caveats. Yeah. And <laughs> things like app bundling, I'm imagining are just going to make things a little more complicated for people who might be, you know, iced out of the play store because of political, something political. This is literally just somebody made a policy that said, this is not allowed. And that's why I don't have access to these apps that I use every day. Yeah. That is wild. Like when you try and wrap your head around that. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um, and I don't even know that Google necessarily wants for that to be the case with Huawei. Although they don't knows? have a, they don't they have don't, a choice. They don't have a choice in this. Yeah. This is completely because, and, and you know, if we're talking administrations here, our latest our latest administration just signed in uh, continuing this ban on working yeah. with Chinese companies. It's weird. And if this is the political climate we're allowing. Then, well, then you'll get, tell get you, more it's used to and, it's keeping devices Android that do tablets this. out of America. Yeah. I'll, I'll say one, one thing. Out of America. I'll say one thing. This is, I think, as much a lobbying and financial thing on behalf of other companies as much as it is a political one. Hmm. Because Huawei was an enormous threat to the incumbent Qualcomm in the chipset space. They were. Hmm a real threat in that space. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Qualcomm's lobbying dollars having gone to ensuring that Huawei stay out of the game for a little while longer. Hmm. And that lobbying 
in a way has also reflected in Xiaomi, who are one of Qualcomm's biggest customers, funnily enough, being put on the list for a while and then being taken off. 